It's the last one for this week, looking at the application of our knowledge of the male and female reproductive systems and using that to stop birth when you don't want it. So birth control, um, which can be taken and used in either males or females, but the mechanisms are gonna be different. Historically, birth control is focused more on females, um, partially because females are the ones who are stuck with a baby and can't have leave. Not that um, that's a good thing. That's how, you know, literally they're the one carrying the baby. Um, also because it is historically, as we've understood these systems, it's been easier to stop something that happens once a month. So autogenesis, um, producing one an ovulation once a month versus something that happens millions of times a day in terms of spermatogenesis. Um, however, it's really nice that as we're learning more and more anatomy and physiology and having drugs developed, there are options for both males and females. So female birth control, um, there's all kinds of pills that have again changed in as we develop new drugs. They're all different combinations of estrogen and progesterone. They all take advantage of the feedback system where estrogen um, at these lower levels and progesterone at any level feeds back to turn off the GnRH system, um, the HPG system, and prevents that LH surge. So if you have negative feedback occurring, you can never have an LH surge. So birth control pills pretty much always contain progesterone. Um, I don't think there are estrogen only pills. There are progesterone only versions and there's some that are combinations and different metabolites, different um, doses of each. And they all work by providing this constant level of the hormones that provide negative feedback so ovulation can't occur. Um, it, they do stimulate some building of the endometrial wall. So you still do have menses if you take that week without the hormone. Um, so some women also take these for things like heavy periods, heavy cramping and stuff because it can lessen that buildup of endometrial tissue in the uterus. Um, and then now there's also more varieties of birth controls, some that have that placebo, the seven day placebo where you do bleed and some that don't have that anymore. There's not great evidence that humans need to be menstruating very regularly. Okay, so that's the basics. There's lots of varieties of it. You can look a whole lot more about different birth controls, pills and females. The other main option in females is IUDs, intrauterine devices. This is the other one that's more, most prevalent. So these are actually little devices that are implanted up through the vagina, in, through the cervix, and then into the uterus. So they physically sit there and they either prevent the sperm from reaching the egg so they can disrupt sperm swimming. They somehow stop the sperm from doing their thing or they prevent implantation by disrupting the wall of this, this uterine lining, the endometrium, they like physically disrupt it. That's what the copper ones are thought to do. So there's a variety of types. Some contain hormones, some don't. Some of them, they, they all work a little bit differently. Some of them are not sure exactly how they work, but they're disrupting either sperm travel or implantation of the embryo. And they last anywhere from like two to 10 years. Last thing on here is I want to just show how tiny this is. This, this always looks giant in this picture. So this is the little thing that is the same size as this one. So your uterus is not as big as like, I think we imagine until you have a baby inside, then it expands. Okay, so that's female, the main methods for female birth control. Male birth control, there are a couple different options um, and things being developed. The first one, the oldest one actually is a vasectomy. So vasectomy is a semi-permanent technique. I'm drawing little scissors here. This is when you cut the vas deferens um, or ductus deferens. And so that sperm cannot get through there anymore. And this is fairly permanent, although I've heard that can be reversed. Um, something that you probably just don't wanna do until you think you're done having kids. Um, but a similar option to that, that is more recent is this gel. So this is called Vagicel, this one brand. And instead of cutting here, you are injecting this gel into the vas deferens. So the gel fills the vas deferens up 
and prevents the sperm from being able to get through physical blocking. Um, and I actually don't know how long it lasts, but it's on the order of like, I think months rather than permanent. So that's a more recent development. There's also hormone pills for males that are being developed that are analogs of testosterone and act to prevent and slow down spermatogenesis. Um, and those would have to be taken daily as well. And so those are currently being developed and approved and studied and such as well. So those are some options. Good old condoms, also another type of physical blockage that works pretty well. <laughs> 